The uh, internet has seen a phenomenal uh, growth uh, over the past two decades, uh, especially starting 91 when the US uh, government has opened uh, NSFNet to the commercial use. Uh, and and uh, back, back then, uh, the Internet Engineering Task Force had recognized that the address space uh, was almost uh, going to be depleted by the end of the 90s. So a new version has been uh, designed by the ITF called IPv6, and this will allow the Internet to be uh, uh, extended, at least from an Internet, uh, from an address space. Uh, but at the same time, many uh, functions have been reviewed and redefined you know, to, kids, to, to better cater for um, more functions that could assist, in this case, the current internet that we have today, which is more mobile internet. So you need plenty of address space in order to do that. Now, the deployment uh, as such uh, is, is following more the same pattern that the address space depletion. So the central pool has been depleted uh, in February 2011. And then the regional ones uh, like the Asia uh, Pacific area and Europe have been depleted in 2011 and 12 respectively. And we expect uh, the US uh, region or North American region to be depleted uh, in 2014. And then the smaller regions like Africa and Latin America will follow uh, uh, afterwards. Uh, <clears throat> so so uh, in terms of uh, deployments, we see uh, obviously a strong uh, push uh, from the European side due to the involvement of the European Commission uh, with various projects. So, so basically the ITU is based in Switzerland, so uh, Switzerland is number one today due to the deployment of the Swisscom of IPv6. So it has reached 10% of uh, uh, internet penetration in, in a country, which makes Switzerland number one today. So, so this is a, a, a proof that's pioneering in this area can uh, uh, followed by uh, uh, countries like France, even Luxembourg, since the uh, telecom operators have uh, done IPv6. And we see Germany moving uh, pretty uh, uh, ahead also in this uh, curve. But in terms of uh, users, the US with 10 million users today is number one, followed by Japan with uh, almost 5 million users. And uh, the current uh, IPv6 internet penetration so far is about 2% uh, looking at the Google stats of people accessing Google with IPv6. So basically today when you access uh, Google, you will access it only by IPv6. The same thing for the top 10 websites in the world, which is basically the content needed in order to make IPv6 happen. But at the same time, a lot of governments have taken uh, actions. Uh, obviously the US government has put a lot of effort with its uh, federal IPv6 task force and uh, in a recent uh, event organized by the ITU in Warsaw uh, for the uh, regulators, so you can visit that place. And uh, we have made a contribution into uh, how the various governments and especially the regulators have uh, are promoting IPv6 uh, around the world. And it's uh, interesting to look at the Saudi Arabian example, uh, which is quite leading because they have done it the proper way. And it could be an example for the other regulators in order to motivate the other regulators uh, to push uh, IPv6. So obviously it's in the hand of the ISPs and the telecom operators. So the telecom operators uh, are reluctant to move fast into IPv6 because it is a, a big investment to them. Uh, and since uh, NAT, which is kind of uh, uh, the switchboard of the, the, the internet, similar to uh, the switchboard in the 60s where people didn't have their own phone numbers so they had to call the switchboard in order to be connected so the internet functions today and and i think that's the end-to-end -end model is very important for the many new innovative applications that are going to come with the smartphones and also the internet of things as well as uh, smart grid and the many applications that need to have their own dedicated ip addresses so you'll be able to monitor them and manage them either locally or remotely so the innovation in the internet is not yet there you can do it today in smaller scales, but with IPv6, you'll be able to do it in bigger scales. So, so, so you will find that you have uh, pioneers and, and followers. Uh, basically, you will not have losers on the internet because the IPv4 has shown that everyone can join and it will not be different for, for IPv6. 
So, so it's quite normal that the pioneers are going to be uh, the leaders in this area. And we see that uh, from places to places and, and you go always into these S curves. So those that have started early basically lose a bit of impact later on. Uh, so newer entrants uh, uh, take advantage of that S curve because they are starting late. So, so you will see in the end when the address space is totally depleted and the uh, number of uh, internet users is reaching now about 3 uh, billion with the smartphones, I think it will not be far by the end of this decade to have uh, basically everyone and everything. So we're talking about something like uh, 50 billion internet uh, connections in the world. And looking at the latest stats from uh, Cisco, they're showing that the internet will have certain impacts, uh, a value of $14 trillion on the economy by the end of this decade. So, so obviously IPv6 uh, has a business case and the first uh, uh, winner should be the telecom operators in order to create new innovative ways for the end users to access the internet. And IPv6 has to be transparent to the end users. Like today, people don't know that they, are, they have an IP address. And it will not be different for IPv6 at the beginning. But later on, when people start recognizing their, that they are present on the internet with their own IP addresses, then they will create, they will become uh, internet producers instead of just consumers today. So, so the production is left to experts today, but in the future, I think it will be commonplace that everyone will be an expert in delivering different services from his home or from his mobile device or uh, having access to different services across the, the various economic ecosystems, connecting his car to his uh, dealer or directly to the manufacturer in order to do uh, the various uh, maintenance and so on and so forth. So, so the potential of uh, IPv6 is uh, quite tremendous and it will need a lot of education. We have something like 20 million engineers to be educated on IPv6 and I think that's, that's the first hurdle in order to get V6 across to the engineers and how to implement it. But like always, uh, uh, you know, this is must probably the biggest update, if not upgrade of the internet, uh, the largest uh, you can imagine. Uh, and most probably the last one for the kids to come until we find something new. But, uh, I, you know, it's like with the phone, we have not invented anything new than the phone. So it will be with us for a long time because it's a big investment and the internet will be also uh, there with us uh, for a long time. So we have to sustain its uh, growth and uh, sustainability in, in the future. And I think this is a very formidable task for all of us and, uh, and the IT will play a great role by getting especially the regulators you know, to get the governments to be the first uh, biggest user as their procurement uh, capacity is quite big so they can create the business uh, case for the uh, business ecosystem, so the ISPs as well as the industry in order to promote uh, IPv6 in their countries uh, for a better internet in the future. Thank you.